This is the beginning and the end, the rise and the fall. Our gate will begin its saunter at the source when the infant learns to crawl. was the author and the architect. The angels were his ink slingers, his actors and actresses. His two purest talents were Arima and Nidria, two destined hearts bound by the same idea. The unrelenting constancy of love and hope can rescue and restore you from any scope. In her, Arima confided his curbing frustration. His gifts had been exhausted Oh, how they'd misused them. She averted his passion and eased his blood, and so he confessed it to her. He had fallen in love. Every time I look at her, nobody understands. 
most skilled of the cherubs. He felt his aptitude and slate were being misused, shamed. He repined this to O the scientist, who replied with a calm face, expressionless.
dream with your eyes closed Try and pluck the pearls from your The vision of the world had been realized, but the sculpture of the earth was looked upon by jealous eyes. Arima refused to relent. He demanded to be heard. Let my unique deft hands be known, he asserted. But even this brash avowal was met in return by no mouthful. Oh, simply just smiled. So defeated and galled, headed for the darkness. No one seemed to understand. Only the shadows would hearken. He sat in peace, but on his shoulder, at rest, perched a dinky brownish spider named Barias.
the seed had been sown. Now the evil would grow. His keen young veins were ripe for this aim. So Arima set forth to use the lamps as a torch. And with everyone around, he tore them to the ground. And suddenly, without warning, their creation was burning. Their design ignited, all that hard work slighted. So Toba the Torah was sent to hold Arima responsible for his mess, to ban him to this fiery abyss, while the remaining found a new place to live. his family strain, and the girl that he loved vacate to a new place to start over on fresh terrain. And from his desolate throne, he watched them compose a mountainous wall of stone to separate themselves from him. A massive, jagged barricade to lock themselves in. Theirs would be the light, his would be the dark. For a century, these halves would wait. One world set apart.
times from now there will be two chosen bound to me Inside her lock he will turn the key Their love will be strong enough to erase all the wrong we've done Return us to where we belong with the light and dark as one prophecy, but he was laughed at, fitted with an unfavorable, grafted cast for a foolish dreamer, a romance seeker. The streets frowned, but deep down, he screamed out. He knew there was accuracy in the antiquated legacy, legitimacy to the famed sea, a quiet certainty to his fated fantasies.
never materialize Townsfolk are ashamed Why can't I live up to my family name? Well, it's not me that you see it's just my pedigree You're a reckless and romantic rogue Your head is in the clouds You'll be changed in all your life Shackled to the ground You're not the chosen one Don't you ever dream of someplace better Dark has been your home If you elope, I'll hunt you down Through suffering, you'll atone Dear palace, you're my brother You loved and watched over me There's something bigger at stake My purpose is this journey Brother, you are short-sighted Naive and starry-eyed You are not Brother, I can't help this feeling My heart tells me to run You were meant to rule the dog I was meant to see the sun Don't you Atticaius, tired of fiction and bound by his ambition, left his home for the City of Light. Disguised as a citizen, his identity was hidden within a city that sat glistening. He was eager for this new life. He contemplated and hated why had he waited so long to flee his home forever shaded where the jaded were never wrong. He took a deep breath. He was finally gone. His hope was left strong that a meaning would be found that had kept him withdrawn. His stare had caught a light, and he fell for the sight. Her name was Princess Anura, and she suffered from the same strife. And, like Atticaius, she spent most of her time dreaming of a different life.
was eager to trade vows, to float away and settle down. But first, Atticaius had to meet Anura's father, his majesty, the one and only, his royal highness, the king. He had to kiss his jeweled fist and bow to the crown, kneeling on the ground. He would propound to become her prince. So you're the boy I've heard so much about from my daughter's open mouth. Well, she's described for me wild fantasies of true love and ancient prophecy. Did you think that you could walk right in and steal princess for your Seducing her with empty dreams and a rusty
you think I'll just sit back and let this slide? I will surely not give up without a Denied by the king and his greed, the pair would indeed be married in secrecy. But before they had agreed when and where to meet, the princess felt queasy and weak, could barely speak. Atticaius knew instantly why she was so green and what had caused the disease. It was his proximity. She was ill from his company. Evil's ubiquity. You can't run from your history. Your past will seek you endlessly. He knew the only remedy to her viral malady resided and abided on the opposite side of the Petrus Levy and its harsh, barbed, concrete peak. So while avoiding the leak of his true identity, Atticaius convinced the princess of their leave they would meet with a specialist and rid her blood of this. He kissed her on the lips and assured her a lifelong live. See? 
This boy, this speak of sincerely Sits atop my family tree Then I was truly mad So they arrived at the doctor's camp. His crude shack, a shanty with walls of broken glass, light leaking through the shattered cracks. And though he was cordial, the young couple was doubtful. keep a close eye on their adored ones. But they had journeyed for a reason. They were here for the medicine, to cure the infection. But nothing could prepare him for the events that would ensnare them. All he could do is trust what he knew. He would listen to his gut and live for his love. Dear 
ghost, you look white as a sheet. Just have yourself a seat. Open wide, say, ah, let the doctor take a peek. Now I must admit, I knew you'd come, the boy in his love. Elope to save her from disease, wash your hands of her blood. and filters, pried scrolls and read excerpts. He spoke in foreign phonetics and read runes from ancient relics, stirred ointments with potions and unctions with doses. He whisked it till smoke rose and seeped into her nose. The illness had relinquished. The doctor had fixed it. The cleansing accomplished, their love was free to flourish. But before it could sink in, the front door was kicked in. Standing in its place was Pallas. Driven by malice, he had barged in to challenge Atticaius, to prove their love. Their word wouldn't be enough. Pallas needed it in blood.
been lying through your teeth Anura, please listen I really can't explain I meant to tell you sooner It's been gnawing at my brain Now you know the truth But that knowledge shouldn't change The nature of our love We've broken through the chains I'm sure that she would care to Hear your acumen As to how your presence Is the reason she is sick But I suppose it's in since her life is ending When I thrust this blade in To her heart a thumping Brother, no! Brother, what have I done? My blade has pierced your side This was never my intent Oh God, please stay alive Dear Pallas, you're my brother You've tried to protect me But your dagger's edge find in my flesh It truly was my destiny Brother, I was short-sighted I ignored your cries You really are the chosen one The calculated sacrifice Please listen to my last words Before I fade away This is my gift to you Live for your love every day of love and hope will rescue and restore you from any scope.